hear me? Yeah. Okay, so yeah. Um, yeah, I'm Xiang Yu from Singapore Power. I joined Singapore Power like two months ago. Yeah, I'm quite happy there. So, yeah, so I'm, today I'm going to talk about uh, React on Rails a Webpacker approach. So, the reason that I got this slide here is that um, because we have some complex uh, front end logic, and uh, when I was dealing with uh, the initial code was in jQuery. And it's a lot of jQuery update, and I feel it's really bad. I mean, it's really hard to maintain. So I'm thinking probably I should ha uh, use, uh, take the help from React and uh, Redux. So yeah, finally, I, I did some experiment, and now it's working fine. And actually, frankly speaking, I'm quite honored to talk about React in Facebook here in a Ruby <laughs> meetup. Yeah, thank you. So. Uh, yeah, long story short, I think I'll just do a little bit of demo of what I actually got in the end, which is localhost. Yes, this is what I got. And uh, basically, if we take a look at um, use by admin, yeah, I'm a bit nervous. <laughs> so, yes, so basically, we can see that we actually got two React components, and uh, two React connected with Redux. And what it has is, uh, number one, it has uh, uh, style. I forgot. Let me see what the folder name. So, oh, I'm in a wrong folder. Oh, so yes, this is the uh, one web package demo. So, uh, I put it here. So, basically, what we can do is we can actually change it to red. And it's red. And we can change it to a uh, back. Yes. And then uh, what else? Yes, it basically is hot reload. Uh, hot, what they call hot module replace. So I can add some to do here, and I can add some more, and I can actually modify on the fly. So, which is has been demoed a lot of times in other framework. But uh, today when I check online, there are some existing talks I found out that there are some people talk about it already, and then. Um, yes, basically, as you expected, if I do some modification here, we can see something got changed uh, real time. And we can also do change some logic here. So basically, uh, this reducer. So I assume that I do I need to explain about how React and Redux works. I, I'm not so sure about this. Uh, I, will, I, will, I will explain later on. Like in the, it's part of the slides. But for the demo purpose, I just. So basically, now if I add to do, I'm not adding to do. Uh, oh, sad. OK. It's having some issue, obviously. Oh, I know why. Yeah, I know why. Oh, yeah. Sorry, this is not part of the plan. So, so I know why. I know why. Yeah. Just now I was doing some change, and this thing give me some error. Okay, fine. What should I do in this case? Oh, but, but it's it's not it's not related to. I mean, I mean the error the error is because when live reload actually this thing, I I guess is this this ID thing got, re uh, reset and that is probably causing issue. But I'm not going. I'm not planning to do a live debugging yet, so. Yeah, I just basically, basically I just try to show that okay, if I basically if I change the reducer, the reducer actually got how reloaded. So basically, it works very nice that I can even. Um, mm, mm, how come I got this so good? Yeah. So basically, this is just a mm, index stuff. This is not React component, but still, by changing the styles, I can still. I can change the color also. So basically, it, this by doing by doing this approach, it makes the development really really fast. Because you, by, you if you want to change something, you just change and then you can view immediately. You don't really need to go back to the original state, whatever. So yeah, this is a demo, and then the talk starts. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so back to motivation. Yeah. So basically, we have some complex front end. I want to have React plus Redux to help me, and then. Um, because we are using Rails, I don't, re I don't really want to have a separate component 
if I want separate, I just use I just use Node.js is good enough. So I still want Rails, but I want uh, basically I want Rails and Sprocket. Yeah, Sprocket is good. So I, I still want them, and uh, yeah, and then Webpacker I think is helpful because it can I can in, if I use Webpacker it I mean if I use Webpack it can I can use all the good things from JavaScript world. Basically, uh, it gives me yarn, and then if I yarn is basically uh, similar to npm install, if I'm not wrong. So yeah, the the next thing is like I want to keep it simple and stupid. Basically, I want it to be e very easy to learn. Basically, uh, it not it's not like I don't really want to add in a lot of DSL. Yeah, although DSL is good. Um, and then uh, yeah, in the end, I want a hot module replacement. Like what you see just now, so that it can ease the development. So basically, uh, what I use is the Webpacker. Is uh, I think it comes by default with uh, Rails 5.1. So Webpacker comes together with Yarn and Babel and the rest of the things from the JavaScript world. And then, if you click on the link, it tells you everything about how to set up things like that. Mm. Of this talk, we will not cover uh, about testing and the uh, JS link because I haven't explored that part yet. But uh, I think I think the Webpacker is supporting the testing. Just that I don't know how to do it, it yet. And then, yeah, about setup, there are two ways. Like if you are starting a new app, you can just do a real new dash dash Webpack. Uh, equal to React, uh, you can do that. Or if you want to use something else, like Vue. Or what they call? There are some other web framework that web uh, support. You can click on the link and uh, go inside and see. It. And then, uh, if you are, if you have an existing framework, I think the web packer supports at least to four point something. You can check on the web packer website for the support. And then you can just add in the gem and do a web packer install, and it will set up the things automatically for you. It's quite easy. And then, uh, yeah, the another thing you need to do is uh, you need to update your layout to include the JavaScript type. type. Basically, th what this does is uh, automatically uh, include the thing that uh, compiled by the web pack. Yeah. So, uh, the, uh, a, a, a bit troublesome part is that now you need to have two commands. One is real serve, another one is uh, to start a web pack, uh, web pack dev server. Uh, it's like it, it's a standalone instance. You can basically in the config, you can config on where to start. Um, so basically, you can config on the host that is listened to and uh, the port number you, where you start. So that uh, when it runs, it actually runs like this. So basically, you have two instances. And then I think there is uh, what they call a uh, proc file. Oh, I forgot the name. Right? Oh, format, right? Yeah, format. Yeah, you can use that. Uh, but I personally, I don't really like to use that approach because sometimes I want to see the specific log of each of the different one. I just go to different type. It's good for me. But by using format, you not you you simply need one single command. Yeah. So. Yeah. Oh, this is the part I'm planning to explain about Redux. Uh, so basically, the idea about Redux is like the re React is just a view. So basically, from the from from some model, you render the view, and then re what Redux provides you is like it has a store. It's a global store. So basically, uh, from the store, you render the view, and then from the view, when something happens, you dispatch an event. Basically, this event it, it will go through the reducer and update the uh, update the store. So that it triggers the uh, MV module view, view module, uh, uh, sorry, model view, view model update. So the flow like that. Uh, uh, yeah, it's not very clear. Uh, but yeah, I think I just continue. <laughs> so Redux, uh, how to set up Redux? I think it's quite standard. Uh, you just add in the React Redux, and then um, this is some of my trick. I should probably show you my JavaScript file, like for how I set up Redux. So basically, uh, let me see. Um, 
I need to do it this way. So it's that's all. I still have to do some left debug. Um, okay. I'm kind of like inventing some of my own approach. Basically, uh, for my co for my current approach, I still use jQuery, which can be taken out. But for the ease of coding, I just use. Uh. And then uh, for the component, I gave them attribute uh, which has the component name. So basically, this is one of the React component, and then it has a component name. But then, the, uh, by the way, what I demo here is just my own convention. You can you can build your own convention. Uh. So for each of the component name, right, you will actually look for this React component. The React component is just a couple of exports. So basically, each of them is uh, each of them is just my convention is that I have a React, and then I have a reducer. Reducer is a logic, and React, React is a view. And then the uh, store instantiation is. It's here basically uh, for each of the component. For each of the component, I find the co corresponding component. And uh, if it's a reducer, if, if it has a reducer, basically it means that it has a logic. It, it is a Redux component, so I instantiate a star for it and then put it on the view. Otherwise, I just create a, create the element and render it on the view. So that's how I render the how, how I render. Mm, so basically, now I basically separate out the uh, component and my view uh, and my UI part. So basically, whenever I want to use a component, I just write that, that, and then let the component itself handle the logic internally. This is my own approach. Mm. And this, oh, by the way, the code is online. If you want to take a look, I can put, paste the link later on. So basically, this is how I add in the Redux. Mm. Yes, another thing that we need to, we probably want to do is to uh, pass value into React. Re, into React, the gem that I use is Gong. So basically, this one in the controller you can you can specify you can you can just define put some attribute into the Gong, and then Gong in the front end is just a global global variable you can get from there. But another idea, another approach you can do is that you can actually put in the component itself you can. You can also choose to put some attribute here, like data something, data name, and then use whatever approach you like to extract out the data, the data here, and then uh, and then pass it to the reducer. Uh, pass pass it to the reducer. Yes. So basically, I. Uh, but I, this one, I just in, uh, introduce some of the, my own approach. So basically. Uh, when when I first set up the reducer, I will have a global dispatch, which is like a glo the first initialization. Uh, after I set up the store, I will dispatch the initialization event, and then the data is just from the Gong. But you can have your own approach. So yes, uh, if you want to, if you want to make the component to interact with the JavaScript code, right? You can just make this uh, component variable glo uh, global variable, and then in the JavaScript, you can just whenever you need it, you can just reference to this global variable. In that in that case, you can actually uh, interact with the React component. Yes. Mm. Actually, do I need to go through the hot module? How I enable the hot module audio reload? Basically, uh, I just follow the guys here. For the CSS, is I just follow I just follow this issue page CSS issue uh, Webpacker issue page there. Mm. The idea, the basic idea about hot module reload is that whenever there are some change, whenever there are some update, and then the Webpack the Webpack will um, the Webpack will actually create create this uh, 
div and then the front end will actually get this update and then uh where is it this is my understanding one so basically you can see that whenever it change here the update is fetched and then mm, Okay, uh, sometimes I need to restart the server because I change. Mm. Ah, okay, I think the CSS, I uh, just follow the issue there is easy and then uh, the server side, uh, for the for the hot module re for hot module reload, uh, for the React component, right? On the server side, uh, I use uh, what they call there's a gem called Webpacker React. It actually provides both a gem, it, it functions both as a gem and also an npm module. But the part I use for this npm module is that it just add some add in some configuration, uh, for add in some configuration to the webpack. So basically, um, if you take a look at this. If you take a look at here, it basically it tells you how to set up. And I just follow the gap here. Yes. Mm. And then the client side i code i do the a little bit of coding myself basically it's like um easy Oh, whenever I see that I I can actually hot reload, uh, I'll listen to this event, and uh, then whenever it whenever my server side change, I'll re-render my component. That's the basic idea. So basically, this whenever the server side change, and then this render got caught. Uh, this render is actually is actually taking the taking. The, mm, do I need to explain? Uh, this render will actually take. Uh, I buffer. I buffer the store locally. Remember, uh, we have three components, three things: the component, the React component, the store, and the reducer. The store is something that is something in the page itself is a variable, and then the reducer and uh, the React component are just code. So basically, when it changed, we can just replace them, and then it hot reloads. That's a bit the idea on the client side. Mm. Yes, I think for the details of the code, you can actually take a look at my code here li later on on the GitHub mm. if you are interested. Yes, another good part about this uh, Webpacker approach is that if you want to go to public, right, you it actually hook into the asset pipeline. So when you do a asset precompile, it actually you actually put uh, the images into it uh, compile the images into the public folder and also whatever was set here you got compiled there uh, in the public folder so I can do a demo so actually I, I, I did this pre beforehand so now if we start see if you start a production server, and we see errors. <laughs> um, okay, fine. 
So let's do a aside precompile. So basically, this aside precompile is you uh, will read from the uh, this manifest dot JSON is generated from the web packer, and this is uh, ex this is the exported file that is going to be pre-compiled by Rails. So Rails will take this uh, manifest.json and uh, uh, do the uh, pre-compile by this uh, sprocket. So now if we do a Rails production, it will be there. So we have the logic ready, and then now it's without the library, without the hot replace because it's production. And the uh, files are in public folder that you can see the you can see the assets, the PNG and GIF are inside there. Yes, and then now we need to talk. So if you want to go so go with this approach, the issue that I found mm, with the default approach, right? The what can you can improve is like the firstly the folder structure. I show you how the folder structure like when it's first generated. So this is at first. So at first the Folder structure here, I'm not sure if you can see. So when it first generated, the f default by default, it will put everything into this JavaScript folder. So it's a bit weird that in the app, you have a set, and in the set, you have JavaScript. And then also, in the app, you have a JavaScript. And then in the JavaScript, you probably want to have style a set. Then it's a bit confusing. So you, you can actually rename it here in this uh, webpacker.config. Basically, it uh, tells you. Where's your source pass and uh, where's the entry pass? Entry pass is another thing. So where's the source pass? So if you want, the way I rename it is like this. So now inside of this uh, JavaScript, I just call it Webpacks. Mm. Another thing I want to I need to mention is that this entry pass is actually the files inside this entry pass will actually be compiled in this manif will be generated in by this uh, manifest. So basically, what it means that if you ha if you have another file here, you can actually get from the Webpack Dev server. Mm. Oh yes, another thing is that the host name. So basically, uh, initially the host name is uh, 0 0.0.0.0. .0 .0 .0. Mm, it's some weird behavior that I observed that mm, in in Mac, right? If if you go to oh, in Mac by default it hides this line. Mm, this one I don't know why yet, but if you have this line and you have this setup, what you have is uh, um, Murphy's law happens. What will go wrong always go wrong. Tap <laughs> uh, server. Yeah, so basically, we will have this line tap server that is serving the part 8080. Um, by going to localhost, you, ca you cannot really visit the server. 
if you have this thing in your host, and this thing is in your host by default. I think it's related to some IPv6 configuration, but I haven't figured out why yet. So now you have it. This is uh, this is the Webpack Dev Server, but with this enabled, you basically is gone. So this is something you need. Like if you have are facing this kind of issue, you need to take because the default, because the default configuration actually has this kind of issue, and uh, somehow it doesn't appear in the issue page of the Webpacker yet. Mm. Another thing is like because you are actually hard coding this uh, part number. So suppose if you if you want to have different web packers web packers servers, you need to manually config this part number. Otherwise, they will conflict. Mm. My current approach, my uh, issue is that because I'm using this uh, Gong, it doesn't really work well with uh, Turbo Link because Turbo Link is like doing actually doing a live, it doing a JavaScript get. So this Gong will variable will not update it. So this can be actually better improved. There are some other libraries online, but I haven't checked out. You can take a look on them later on. So basically, both of them are supporting server-side rendering. And one is like a standalone gym, and the other one is on top of Webpacker. Yes, uh, that's all. Mm, thank you. <laughs> I'm not sure if you got a question about the approach I have or about this red on Rails. Sorry, in the interest of time, I'll ask any questions to be uh, directed to Yang Yi after the Yes. Yeah. Mm, I can post uh, my GitHub, this GitHub repo link and upload the slides. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs>